All right, YouTube, uh, let's do some uh, vitamin D synthesis. So in this case, we're going to actually do just kind of looking through the names, going from one name to the next and seeing how we can sort of compact this knowledge into some sensible um, system in order to remember it more effectively. So I was trying to study this and I noticed one um, basic pattern that has basically allowed me to crack this system and easily remember um, and name every um, metabolite in that pathway and that is that there's a little pattern where you go from D2 to D3 and then it goes from um, a diol to a triol so in other words what you have to remember is that it goes from 23 to 23 in some sense where the first two and three are um, D2 and D3 and the second 22 and 3 is a diol and a triol so I've noted this here. So you have a D2 converted to a D3, and then a calcidiol converted to a calcitriol. Now, if you're looking at your own material, you may be saying there's, um, I'm seeing some other sort of names here and, and things like this. Um, I'm gonna go through that and we're gonna get that all cleared up. Um, but you'll just have to give me a chance here to explain this. Um, one other thing to note is the um, location of synthesis. Some people like to talk about, you know, where is calcidiol converted to calcitriol? And unless you have some way of remembering that, it's going to be hard to come up with that. Um, so what I've noticed is in this, in this order, we have the important locations of synthesis being sequential by the depth in the body. So that is going from the skin to the liver to the kidney. So um, that's just a mnemonic for saying, um, First, the important conversion is in the skin, which isn't actually this D2 to D3 conversion. I'm going to mention what it is here in a second. Um, but uh, as I was saying, and then the second conversion, important location of conversion is D3, and that is in the liver. And then the last conversion to this active form of um, vitamin D is actually in the kidney. Right, so you go from skin, say you were to um, make an incision just above the liver, um, you would first go through skin, and then say you go through the liver, and then you'd hit the kidney, right? If you think about that, maybe on your right side. Um, so this is a nice little system and all. Um, however, other um, places you may see, be seeing all of this um, nomenclature with calciferol. So they're talking about calciferol this, calciferol that. Um, and how you deal with this is, Basically, calciferol is just a, it's a suffix that all of these forms um, take. I've highlighted these in red. And here we have basically a, the sequential um, conversions, as I had noted up here, except with these other names, right? So in some sense, I could say you go from ergo calciferol to D3, or in other words, choline calciferol, right? And so calcitriol is also called 125-dihydroxycholine calciferol. Another thing to notice is starting with cholecalciferol, you, you begin with this chole, cal, this chole um, prefix and then you hold on to that all the way through. Um, so first we have this calciferol, you add the cholecalciferol, then you add a uh, hydroxy, and then you add another hydroxy. So I think that's fairly straightforward um, considering we already knew these names were um, diols and triols. It would make sense to add hydroxy and then another hydroxy um, to the name here. Um, one other thing to note is that D2, like I said, is called ergocalciferol. An easy way to remember that D2 is called ergocalciferol is that um, ergo is a, a word that people sometimes use when they're, they mean thus. In other words, when someone says A, ergo B, they really mean thus and they're listing two items, and so that's a reminder, that's a mnemonic, for the fact that ergo calciferol is um, the other name for D2. Now, ergo calciferol is derived from ergosterol, which is actually the primary um, dietary form of um, vitamin D um, that you'll see, um, and that's primarily in um, like oily fish and the like. Now onto D3, D3 is cholecalciferol, um, and cholecalciferol is derived from 7-dehydrocalciferol. So 
if you know the cholesterol synthesis pathway um, well, then you will recognize this compound. If not, um, let me just say that it is, import, it is an important metabolite in that cholesterol synthesis pathway. In fact, it is um, the uh, major pre precursor that forms cholesterol, right? So on the one hand, we have D2 being a dietary form, or in other words, ergo, um, ergosterol being a, di a dietary form of cholesterol. And then we have this um, cholesterol derived from a uh, or this vitamin D derived from a cholesterol precursor, and that being 7-dehydrocalciferol. So when people say that vitamin D is derived from cholesterol, they're actually making a sort of mistake because um, vitamin D is actually derived from a um, cholesterol metabolite. And, and so in this sense, we could say that vitamin D is in fact um, a product of um, the pathway and not um, of, of the, the synthesis pathway of cholesterol and not a product of cholesterol, so to speak. That's sort of just a semantic side note. Um, but one of the things, as I mentioned before, is that um, this D3, this conversion to D3 happens through, a, um, through the sun in the skin. And we can remember that easily by remembering sun is a three-letter word. And so um, we have the formation of D3 from, as I said, 7-dehydrocalciferol. So um, just to make this clear, let me go over this um, briefly. So we have ergo, er ergosterol that can um, feed into this D2. And then we have the cholesterol precursor, 7-dehydrocalciferol, that can feed into this D3 um, location. Again, there's all these um, sort of um, names, uh, wh whatever names you are choosing to use. I think the system, looking closely and carefully at these patterns, is not too hard to learn. Um, uh, briefly, just let's look at some other material that um, presents this sort of stuff here. So, as I said, 7-dehydrocholesterol um, converted to D3. We remember that because um, the sun is a th um, sun is a three-letter word, and so that reminds us of D3. Um, let's see, do they have ergosterol on here? No. Um, but we know that a precursor to D3 is in fact D2, um, which remember was um, another name for it was ergos uh, ergocalciferol um, because um, as a mnemonic, we remembered that ergo um, is also used to, when someone says A, ergo B, that is a two item um, list. And so that reminds us of D2. And remember, D, um, D2 was um, formed from ergost, um, uh, yeah, ergosterol. So um, this is basically um, all, I think, everything you need to know for this synthesis pathway. is fairly compact, fairly easy. I would encourage you to either print this off or draw something similar yourself, um, maybe a little more clearly to how your brain is thinking about this. But in any case, uh, cheers and thanks for watching, guys. Good luck.